Welcome to our discussion with Mary Morgan Ketchell and her mother, Senator Marsha Blackburn, authors of the new book, Camilla Can Vote. We are excited to have them with us today to talk about the story of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're here talking with the Network of Enlightened Women chapters around the country. We've got chapters on college campuses and also young professional chapters. And we work to educate, equip, and empower the next generation of conservative women leaders. Our organization started as a book club, so having authors on is a special honor for us. And this year, we are promoting a conservative women vote campaign to showcase that conservatives were part of the discussion and part of the success of the 19th Amendment. We think too often the left tries to take over some celebrations like that when it comes to women's rights. So we're excited to have you on here um, for the centennial celebration. And this book takes readers back to an important moment in history and in women's rights history. Could you talk to us about why you chose this moment to write on and why you chose to write it as a children's book? Thank you so much, Karen. We are just so excited to be here. And thank you so much for featuring Camilla Can Vote. I love hearing that you started as a book club. I think that is fantastic. And one of the reasons that we've written this book is to have young girls reading about something that we feel very strongly should be a part of their repertoire. They need to know about the suffragist effort and what happened as the ratification of the 19th Amendment was coming into place in 1920 and how that was just 100 years ago. You know, it's an incredible story that all culminates on August 18th, 1920. So right around the corner to the centennial here in Nashville, Tennessee, when a young legislator Later, Harry T. Byrne, the youngest one that had been elected in Tennessee, was faced with a moment when there was a 48-48 tie in the state legislature. And just in the nick of time, his mother, Miss Feb, got a letter to him and urged him to change his vote and help Miss Cat put the rat and ratification. And he did so, he was wearing a red rose. Of course, we know that the suffragists were symbolized by the yellow rose. So he swapped out, changed his vote and made history that day for all American women. And that's why we decided to write this book. The story plays out in such a vivid way and um, not just for Tennesseans, but for all American women and especially for the little girls. So. Hence the children's book. Well, that, that's wonderful. Um, and I love how it tells a real personal story because a lot of times I think these big moments in history um, seem so abstract, but to tell the story of how one mom made a difference is really inspiring. Um, what did you find in your research and writing in the book? Did you find any misconceptions about the history of the 19th Amendment, 19th Amendment that you'd like to share? One of the things that really comes to light in this is the length of time that it took to get the 19th Amendment passed. This was a 72 year struggle and they actively started on this in 1848, but actually laying the groundwork for it started at our nation's founding with Abigail Adams and her admonition to her husband, remember the ladies. And of course, they did not include women in that right to vote at that time. So then the pressure contended, continued to build. And in 1848, at the Seneca Falls Convention, that is when it really got started. And they worked then for 72 years so that in 1920, they were able to make this final push for the ratification. The, the bill passed Congress in 1919, and then they had that period of time to get that 36 states to do the ratification. Now, one of the things that I think many times is uh, overlooked is how difficult it was to get the states to come along and support this. It was not a given. And indeed, you had some states that voted no early on. 
And then it came down that summer to Tennessee as the last best chance. So many times I think people don't realize this was not a given. It was going to happen because uh, the country had changed, because society had changed, etc. This is something that was a consistent 72 year battle. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and Mary Morgan, maybe turning to you, um, Senator Blackburn just talked about, you know, the history of this amendment. been your experience growing up with your mom being the first uh, female elected um, to the House of Representatives from Tennessee and then the first female senator from Tennessee. Could, could you talk about that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what a perfect example of um, a mother taking a second bite at an apple as well. And I know you have um, a young one. I have elementary school age children. And I think it's such a great example of what it looks like to decide to become and take part in an effort that's bigger than oneself. And a great example of perseverance and of grit and of what it means to be a part of a team and to decide to take something on that um, needs to change, whether it is um, something that already has a group rallied around or you're forging ahead on your own, um, just to get behind something that means something and go for it. So I would say that as an answer to your question, I mean, she's the ultimate cheerleader for <laughs> always trying to break barriers for for women and always trying to encourage women and girls to dream big dreams and to push to make those come come true to open those doors of opportunity that's right and i got to vote for my mother in her series of first so as she was breaking through glass ceilings one after the next it was very exciting to me to get friends rallied behind her we went door to door we did letter stuffing we worked on campaigns we went to the events and um that is just something that just makes it all the more exciting that is exciting you talk about dreaming those big dreams one of the reasons i really like this book is i think a lot of times the the women um, by liberals in this country and they have one vision for history and what the role of government is. And so I really like it that you have stepped in um, to this area and are speaking out and telling a story um, proudly as um, conservative women. And I was wondering if you could talk about why is it important for young women to vote, for young women to become civic leaders and get involved in their communities, um, whether that's on campus or in, or in larger society? Yes, and women have always been fierce freedom fighters. And throughout our nation's history, we have seen that time and again, it is women, moms, uh, at, that are active and are pushing to further freedom's cause. Women focus on hope and opportunity for future generations. And of course, Ronald Reagan told us time and again, we do not pass freedom along in the bloodstream. Every single generation has to fight for it. So our nation needs conservative young women to stand up and to learn how to articulate their beliefs and to stand on their principles. And we feel like with Camilla Can, there is a poster in here where she draws courage. And uh, she is in this exhibit and she sees that. And then when she leaves, she can't imagine that there was ever a time where her mother or her teacher would have been disadvantaged and could not vote. And we hope that that, that uh, lesson of courage is received by lots of young women who can say, you know what, I should do this. I should raise my hand and volunteer to serve on this commission or to run for office and seek to serve my community and to help improve things and to be a, a real happy warrior in freedom's cause. It's also a great reminder of what the power of one vote can yes. do. 
and how that changed the story for all American women in this story. And I love telling it through the eyes of a precocious eight-year-old child because, I mean, what a great time to make that something that is heard. One vote, your vote matters. And how great if a little girl grows up thinking and realizing what she can do with that power of having her vote. Definitely. Yeah, that is so true, you know, and Mary Morgan is exactly right. See, this would not have happened. The 19th Amendment would not have happened at that point in time, except for Harry Byrne getting a letter from his suffragist mom who told him to be a good boy and help Miss Cat with the rat and ratification. Now, he was the youngest member of the Tennessee General Assembly. And he had come into this uh, with that bias against giving women the right to vote. But he listened to his mom, who was a suffragist. She belonged to a suffragist club and he took her advice. And it was that one vote that changed this. And the ratification was a done deal. Right, it had taken 72 years and he was only 24. So he was elected at 22. And at that moment, when this opportunity to change the country was laid out before him, he was 24 years old. It's such an incredible story of how one person could make a difference. And I'm glad that letter got to him on time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, now, we'd love to open it up to some questions from some of our members. Um, and before I do so, Mary Morgan, um, anybody who doesn't have it yet, where they could pick it up? Oh, absolutely. So launching a book during COVID times with most of the bookstores closed across the country leaves us to market and sell this book online. And we've got some great partners, booksamillion.com, barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com. Um, please do go on and order a copy of, of the book, if not for yourself, for the little ones in your lives or for a graduation present. What a great 18 year old graduation present for a girl, you know, um, and this can be found there at those retailers. Yeah, and I, I say um, not only is the story one that so many people of different age groups can relate to, but you've also got great illustrations in there. So it's fun to flip through the pictures. So it really can hit. Um, a larger segment, larger age demographics in there. Um, so my staff is emailing me or texting me the questions that are coming in. Uh, so the first one comes from Madison from Indiana. What advice or word of encouragement do you have for conservative women going back to campus during such a polarized election season? Oh, I, I think that the, the number one thing to remember is to speak up appropriately and to pick your battles wisely. You don't want to engage in every conversation, but when you feel as if there is an opportunity, just say, okay, maybe there is a different side to this. And what if there are two sides to this story? And wouldn't we want to hear both sides? You have your side, somebody else has another side. But you know, our nation and our nation's freedom and freedom's cause has been very well served in this country by robust, respectful political debate. And that is how we arrive at consensus. And that is how we work through the process of solving our problems. So if you are going to say, I will not talk to anybody unless they're in total agreement with me or unless they honor this organization, this organization, this organization, then what you're doing is missing out on the opportunity to be a constructive part of the conversation. Thank you for, for, that, for that answer. Um, I now have a question from Susan in Virginia who asks, are there going to be more books with Camilla in the future? She's a mom of three. Oh, yes. <laughs> what a great question, Susan, because, you know, if Camilla can vote, what else can she do? She can run for office. Camilla can be a senator. Camilla can be the president. Really, the sky is the limit. And 
Um, we see the opportunity to um, go forward with the can-do girls. And so be on the lookout for that. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us this, ap this afternoon. Um, I really enjoyed re reading um, and excited to share it with some nieces and friends' daughters. So I'm going to pick up a few more copies. And I know some of our members will as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. We, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having us. Bye.